everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the Merry Making Button Cow. This is a fun and festive and super cozy button cow that you can whip up in no time for gifts or if you wanna add a little uh, festive accessories to your wardrobe or what have you. This is a button cow, so we're using the decorative holes of this lace pattern to secure the button. So if you check out the Fiberflux blog, and I'll put the link down below, you can see all the different ways to style your cow. You can wear the button in the front like this, like a capelet. You can wear it sort of asymmetrically, like a little wrap. You can flip the button to the back and wear it like a cowl as well. So I'm gonna show you how to crochet this and also how to secure our button and do the finish work. Now, the stitch that we're gonna be using is sort of like a, a zigzag, lacy, uh, chunky stitch. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle large enough to fit some of this larger yarn through, a nine millimeter crochet hook. Now I get a lot of questions about my hooks, what hooks I'm using. This is a Knit Picks wood hook. In case you're wondering, I can put the link down below for this if you'd like to check it out. And a large button. Now you'll want it to be large enough to pass through these decorative holes. You don't want it to be too small because it'll kind of fall through. The yarn that we'll be using is Super Bulky 6. So any Super Bulky 6 yarn will be just fine. Now for this one, I did more of like a festive bright red color. I used 162 yards of Lion Brand's Hometown USA in the Tampa Spice. So that's two balls of that. Um, we're gonna try neutral for our tutorial. So that way you can see what it looks like in, in a bold color and a neutral color as well. This is Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the barley colorway. So you can kind of see both, but any super bulky six yarn will be just fine for this pattern. So let's get started. The finished piece measures about 12 inches wide and about 30 inches long. Now you can work more rows to make it longer if you want it to be a larger wrap, um, or you can even stitch the ends together to create a cowl. So, but to get my dimensions, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'll also give them multiple later on in case you want to make this wider as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over just to have it sort of nearby so we can refer to it if need be. And then I'm gonna just, just grab my yarn. Now again, you'll need about 162 yards of a super, super bulky yarn. And this is such a fun yarn because it is a cream color base, but, and to see it a little bit better, maybe we'll use this as the background. But um, it does have some tweed flex through it and some little um, other fibers through it. So it's a fun yarn. Um, even though it's neutral, it still has a lot going on and it's fun to look at. So what we wanna do is chain 26. So to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook. Bring up the loop and tighten. Okay, now we're going to chain 26. But before I begin, I wanted to mention that if you want to make yours wider, you're simply going to work a multiple of 4 plus 2. If you're not familiar with that concept, that's simply 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, as wide as you want it to be, and then add two more chains onto the end of that. Okay, but ours is gonna be 26. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn here. Just grab some more yarn. Okay. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So here is our starting chain. Now some of you ask me that uh, you're having trouble with the chain being too tight. If you have that problem and your chain is not loose enough, just go up a hook size for your starting chain only and then come back down to the nine millimeter hook for the rest of your project. Okay, so let's begin row one. What we're gonna do is double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook to begin. This loop here does not count, so we're gonna go one, two, three, and four, and work a double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that chain, that fourth chain from the hook, 
bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Now I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, then what we're gonna do is work a double crochet into the next chain, just like that. And then in the next chain, we're going to work a double crochet, then a chain three, one, two, three, and a double crochet all in that same chain. So we have sort of, I would call it kind of like a zigzag granny stitch. Um, I don't know what this is technically called, but that's gonna give us that zigzag, that putting those chains in there. It's gonna kind of like tilt it, okay? So then what we're gonna do is skip a chain, and then in the next chain, work a double crochet. In the next chain, work a double crochet. And then we're going to repeat this sequence. So see what we have here? We're starting to get set up for our kind of zigzag, topsy-turvy looking stitch. Okay, so then we're going to work repeat our sequence. So in the next chain, work a double crochet, chain three. One, two, three, and a double crochet on that same chain. Then we're gonna skip a chain and work a double crochet in the next chain and a double crochet into the next chain. Okay, so we just repeated that again. So now we have two of these little kind of peaks here, okay? So let's do that again. We're gonna work a double crochet in the next chain. And then in the next chain, we're gonna work a double crochet, then chain three, one, two, three, and then work a double crochet in that same chain. That'll give you that little kind of opening there, okay? Skip the next chain. In the chain after that, work a double crochet. I'm gonna just grab a little bit more yarn here. Okay. And then in the next chain, work a double crochet, okay? Now we have another peak here, just like that. Okay, so let's repeat that sequence again. Work a double crochet in the next chain, And then in the next chain, work a double crochet, then chain three. One, two, three, and then a double crochet in the same chain. Okay, to give you that little peek there. We're gonna be working into those next. Okay, let me just grab a little bit more yarn. Okay, so after we do that, we're gonna skip the next chain, work a double crochet in the next chain, double crochet in the next chain. Okay, and then you'll have three chains left here and we're just gonna work a double crochet. We're gonna skip two chains and work a double crochet in that very last chain, okay? So it should look something like this, all right? So let's move on to row two. What we're gonna do next is chain five. One, two, three, whoops four, five, and turn our work. And then what we're gonna do is remember those uh, chain three spaces that we created in the last row? We're going to work into those, okay? So work three double crochet, one, two, grab a little bit more yarn, three, then we're going to, if you need to slide it over, that's okay. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and in that same space, work one more double crochet. Just like that, okay? So it should look something like that. All right, so next, we're going to do the same thing into the next space. So locate that chain three space, and then work three double crochet, one, two, 
two and three. And then you can kind of slide things over if you need to. Get a little bit more yarn, then chain three. One, two, three, and in that same space, work a double crochet. Just like that, okay? So we're starting to build that kind of tilty, topsy-turvy look, okay? And you can see we already have quite a bit of height and we've only worked two rows, okay? So next, hop on over to the next space here. Remember that little peak we created? And work three double crochets into that space. One, two, and three. Get a little bit more yarn. Chain three. One, two, three, and then work one more double crochet in that space. Just like that, okay? And it should look like that. Okay, hop on over to the next space and work three double crochet. One, two, three, chain three. One, two, three, and then work a double crochet in that same space. Okay, now to finish off the row, what we're gonna do is count the third chain up. One, two, three, and work three double crochet in that third chain up. One, two, and three. That chain on the end, that's the turning chain from the previous row. We're just um, working into that third chain up from the turning chain, okay? So row two is complete. Let's move on to row three. Now row three is the row you'll be, be repeating over and over and over again until you're finished the project. So if you need to work a row, back it up, watch it again, you can do that as many times as you need to. Okay, so for row three, row three is very similar to row two. We're just gonna chain five once again. One, two, three, four, and five. Turn our work. And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing we did before. In that chain three space, remember from the previous row? We're going to work three double crochet. So one, two, three, then chain three, one, two, three, and in that same space work a double crochet, just like that. And see how they're kind of building on one another? One's going this way, one's going that way. It's starting to get some really neat interest happening here. Okay, hop over to the next chain three space from the previous row and work three double crochet. One, two, three, then chain three. One, two, three, whoops. And in that same space, work a double crochet. So we're just kind of repeating what we've been doing all along, okay? All right, hop over to that next chain three space and work three double crochet. One, two, three, slide it over if you need to, chain three, one, two, three, and then work a double crochet on that seam space. Okay, it's starting to look really, really neat. I love this stitch, it's so cute. Okay, hop over to the next chain three space and work three double crochet, one, two, three, and I like to just kind of push these over. You don't have to, but I like to give myself room for that last one. Chain three, one, two, three, and then work a double crochet all in that same space, just like that. Okay, so now once again, we're at the end of the row. Now this row is a little bit different from row two. We're gonna be working, remember those three double crochets we did back here? 
we're going to work those into the fifth chain of the turning chain. Okay, so you want to count one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to work those into that fifth chain. Okay, so one, two, whoops, I dropped my yarn. Let's try that again. Two, and three. Okay, it's just gonna, we just had a bigger turning chain this time, and so it'll create a little bit of a opening there, similar to this side, okay? Um, and it kind of looks like, you can kind of see that in ours here, where the row begins, okay? So, to finish your button cowl, just keep repeating row three over and over and over again until it's about 30 inches long. Unless you want it longer, you can keep going. Um, I used, for this red one, I used two full balls of the uh, Hometown USA, which is 162 yards, but you can keep going if you want it bigger. So then what you're gonna do is, once you're done repeating row three over and over and over, let's pretend that our piece is finished and we're ready to move on. So all you're gonna do when you're done, let's we'll just pretend this is 30 inches long, is cut the yarn and take your hook, wrap it around, pull it through to fasten off. And then we're going to sew on our button. So grab a piece of matching yarn. And one thing that I like to do is with my needle, you'll wanna test it. So make sure the needle can pass through the button. Mine just barely fits, okay? Um, now, Let's look at the anatomy of our finished piece so I can show you where to sew this button on. When you have your finished piece, okay, so this is the row, this is where we began. Okay, so if we match up what we just made, this is the bottom edge of where you began. This is the starting chain. You want to, um, now it is reversible, so you can really do it on either side, but pick a side and do where the starting chain is, sew it to the bottom right corner, okay? So, we're gonna pretend that this is done. Remember I was saying we're gonna pretend this is done. And I'm just gonna lay this here. So, place your button in the bottom right corner, like how I have this one. And you can see how changing the look of the button really uh, changes the appearance of your piece. Now, I did cut, oh here it is. I cut a piece of yarn earlier. Now, if your yarn is very, very thick, one thing you can do is uh, separate the plies and just make your yarn a little bit skinnier so you can uh, seam it on there a little bit easier. So, just give it a little twist, thread your needle, and just place it where you need it to be, and then just come up from the bottom. Now again, my needle just barely, barely fits. Leave yourself a little tiny tail Go back down, come back up. Might need to shimmy it in there a little bit. It's uh, the holes of the button are only so large. Okay, so once your button is where you want it to be, just flip your piece over. And my yarn has gotten fuzzy because I keep messing with it. And then just tie it a really secure knot, like two or three times should do it. And then you can either take your tapestry needle and weave these ends in, or you can cut them flush. I'm just gonna trim mine. And then, depending on how much yarn you use, you'll also need to weave in the ends. So flip it back over to the back. So now we have a, an established front and back because of our button placement. And so you can thread your tapestry needle once again with the ends, and then you're just gonna come in the back, go in those back loops, because now we have a front and a back. So when we were crocheting, like I mentioned before, it was reversible, because we kept flipping for the rows. Now that we have a button, we have an established front. So just go in those back loops. So come in one direction, kind of straighten things out. Come in the other direction with your needle, just like that. And then you can take your, straighten everything out before you trim. Take your scissors and trim it nice and neat, and then your piece will be done. Now again, ours is a little bit short, but you know we were just pretending it was as long. But you can really see the different looks you can achieve 
with, um, now I have some of these little fibers. I'm just gonna trim these back so they look neater. You can really see the different looks you can get depending on the yarn and the buttons that you use. Now there's a billion buttons out there. You can really get all kinds of different looks. And this stitches up so fast. So it's perfect for gift giving as well. You can make a couple of them. So that is how you crochet the Merry Making Button Cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click on the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.